Hey there, welcome back. This video is the first in a two-part series featuring some beautiful antique and vintage American collectible blue glass. If you are enjoying these videos, please like and subscribe. And if you're totally into them, you can press the bell and get a notification of all new releases. So, I'm having my morning coffee from my old favorite cup and saucer. Well, one of my favorites, you know they're all my favorites. This is uh, Cambridge's Caprice. It doesn't have uh, a finger hole, it just sort of has a a shell there and you there's a, <clears throat> there's a technique anyway enough of me and on to the glass the first items that I should like to share with you are from the hazel atlas glass company introduced to the retail public in 1934 this is transparent cobalt blue modern tone. This is a footed creamer. It has a classic modern design featuring horizontal rings and bands which reoccur in all pieces. Uh, you'll also find uh, monotone today in other colors uh, we will cover uh, those colors when uh, when the time is right uh, and also in the 50s uh, flashed colors but uh, we're going to uh, concentrate right now on the cobalt blue and this as i said is a footed cream pitcher it stands two and three quarters inches high and has a rim diameter of three and three quarters of an inch it has a foot it is not signed uh, I don't often I'm not even sure if I've ever seen a piece of uh, modern tone in in cobalt blue that has been signed so this piece is unsigned and I'm gonna call these pieces uh, signed or unsigned uh, regardless of what I know because uh, I'm looking here to pass information on from me to you, not me to me. Uh, so, this is unsigned and it is <clears throat> a two-part mould there. Interesting handle, which is similar to the one on the cup. Uh, the light shines nicely through this and uh, the creamer it does drip a little bit when you pour, but um, this wasn't designed with form following function. This was designed with art deco uh, stylistic motifs applied to it. And uh, when the style was the dominant motivating force, uh, how the item worked was secondary. Uh, we moved through that so anyway that's the footed creamer I don't want to get off too much on a, a discussion about styles uh, this is the eight ounce cup and I just showed it to you uh, next to the creamer there uh, it's an eight ounce cup and uh, it stands two and three eighths inches tall it has a rim diameter of four inches and it is unsigned also. Like the creamer, it has a two-part mold. It's very nice. It sort of has a demi foot there. It's not a foot, but it is sort of uh, the, the, the line of uh, design there. It, it, it shifts and changes. So anyway, it's very nice and I like it. It's easy to use. You can really get your finger in there and uh, the angle at which the uh, the rim is makes uh, makes drinking hot beverages from those cups <clears throat> easy now I don't have a saucer per se to share with you I haven't found one or if I've, I've had this pattern 
uh, before in the past and I've sold items. So I don't currently have uh, a saucer, but I do have a six inch plate to share with you. And uh, the cup that I bought there was actually sitting on this plate when I bought it. So, and this is six ounce plate and it has the design rings. The color seems to be fairly constant in this pattern. I don't notice a lot of variation and uh, you will notice variation, especially in early morning light and in evening light. Uh, when all the different colors start to work and uh, what's going on uh, <coughs> excuse me, with the item itself really comes to the fore. So that was the six inch plate. I have to flip my script over and this is the eight inch plate. And I don't know if this is a salad plate or a small lunch plate, uh, but uh, I'm sure as we uncover more items in this pattern, it's not as common as it used to be. I see it round and about, and the fact that it's blue tends to have dealers putting uh, fairly high prices on it. Um, it's best if you can pick some up at an auction somewhere where you can get a bunch of it and uh, hopefully you're not in, a, in amongst um, you know, a group of people that are chasing glass. Hopefully they have their shoes on. Anyway, so that is Modern Tone from Hazel Atlas. It's an extensive table line and uh, it's, it's an interesting line to use, uh, but I, I feel unless you're willing to drop some money in it, uh, that uh, it's a slow grower. Anyway, let's move right along. And the next pattern that I should like to share with you is the Lotus pattern from Westmoreland. Introduced in 1921, Westmoreland actually calls this pattern number 21. It comes in three types. There's opaque Lotus, transparent lotus and then there's the satin and the frosted lotus which this is. It has a diameter of 13 and 5 eighths inches. It is a shallow footed bowl. It has a little staining on the bottom there, a little rust staining I don't know what caused that, whether that's coming from the inside or whether it's on the outside, uh, but I have been trying to remove it and uh, I'll keep you posted on, on whether that is happening. All lotus pieces look like lotus flowers. This is a wonderful flower line. As I said, it's called Lotus and it's number one nine two one. Right, uh, the the bowl stands two and five eighths inches high, <clears throat> and as I said, has a diameter of thirteen and five eighths inches. Uh, next, I have a nine inch footed bouquet vase with a petal rim. And there it is. I call this type of rim a splash rim because it seems to me that, you know, when you throw a pebble in the water, you get that kind of splash and that there's so many different types of uh, petal rim uh, trying to distinguish them. So this looks like a bud. I hope you can see there the uh, the raised relief work there, the flower, the uh, leaves around the base of the vase there, just above the uh, the button on the standard there, and the uh, the grooves in the side make it look like the little flower that's about to open, 
into this big flower, right? That's what's going on there. And there's the foot. Can we see? This is a two-part mold. Yes. So, that's the vase there. Okay. What's next? Okay, yes. This. Imperial glass. This line was initially introduced in 1935. The pattern is called Lace Edge, and as I said, it's from Imperial Glass. This is opalescent Lace Edge. It's a footed bowl with a button and cane design around the walls you will find Lace Edge from Imperial with any number of different designs on the walls and in the wells of their items. This bowl stands two and three eighths inches high and has a rim diameter of six and an eighth and has beautiful opalescence and the light shines through it and you can see a whole spectrum of colors. I like it very much. But it's the only one of those I've found in a while and I, I snatched it right up. Uh, <clears throat> but I haven't seen any more since. So, that's that. The next thing I'd like to share with you, and I made a short of this, but it seems to me that uh, my long programs and, and the shorts that I make have two distinct different uh, audiences. So I will be um, making shorts of all items and uh, those items will also appear in appropriate long videos. Uh, I think it's okay if we see the same item. It's, it's a refresher course, really. So without going on too much about that, here it is, and it's from the 1880s, and it's an electric blue five ounce footed child's cup. It has a hobnail design, and it has the twist handle. We see the foot there, and I don't know if the light's allowing you to see, but this mug has a six part mold. It is 140 years old. Looks like it could have just rolled off the uh, manufacturing belt yesterday, doesn't it? Anyway, there it is, the electric blue child's mug. Next, number nine. Oh, lots of electric blue here. This is a nice antique piece. It's an electric blue footed toothpick holder with a petal rim. It has an interior design of vertical panels and it has been decorated as a souvenir from a town called Freedom here in the state of Maine. As you can see, on the front here, it's also been accented with gold. And on the rim, there is wear to that enamelin. Still, this item is 120 years old if it's a day, so it can be forgiven. Uh, how does it stand? Uh, da, 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 da. It stands two and a quarter inches high and it has a rim diameter of one and three quarters inches. Yes, I like it very much. I'm not exactly sure where Freedom Maine is, but it's up there somewhere. We're in Southern Maine here. Uh, we're a hundred miles from Boston, 15 miles from Portland, Maine. In Old Orchard Beach. So, the next thing that I'd also like to share with you is another item that I had made a short of, and I thought it would be really popular, but it isn't. This is a nine ounce bird pattern, cobalt blue carnival glass footed tumbler there. We can see 
the singing bird. This is part of Imperial Glass's Aurora Jewels line, which they reintroduced a lot of their old Carnival Glass lines from back in between 1910 and 1930. Those old patterns were reintroduced back in the early 70s. And this tumbler, which has the IG in the well there raised, uh, is part of that offering. Um, <clears throat> after 1951, remember, all Imperial Glass items have the IG mark in it, so that will help you identify old glass versus new glass uh, at a tertiary glance. Uh, you will need to look and you will need to know the differences between old and new because you will not be fooled, but you will buy things that you didn't intend to buy. I think that's the way we put that. Uh, I can show you an example right now, but it's going to be in the next video and you'll find it fascinating and interesting, I'm sure. On to the tumbler. It stands four and a quarter inches high. It has a rim diameter of two and seven eighths inches. And it has beautiful iridization. Two-part mould, you can see it running up the centre of the tree and the flower there. I love this very much. Star in the bottom, right there. Okay, we have another quick sip. Okay. The next two items that I'd like to share with you are from the Duncan and Miller Canterbury Shape line. That is line number 115. They are both opalescent and they're both vases. Um, this blue opalescence was called Cape Cod uh, and there's a pink version also. Um, initially introduced in 1937, uh, this is the Canterbury shape number 115 from Duncan Miller. And this is a crimped petal rim vase. There's the top there. We can see the petals there. Down the side, we see the base here. This petal base, this ground petal base, and the way all items have this motif around the foot. Canterbury is um, an, an easily recognized shape, but you really do have to know exactly what you're looking for. So there you go, take a good eyeful of that. This vase stands three and seven eighths inches high, and it has a rim diameter of four and seven eighths inches tall. And the second piece from this line that I'd like to share with you is a crimped vase. It's a, uh, excuse me, it has a pinched vase. This one's crimped, this one's pinched. This is a pinched vase that stands three and a quarter inches high and has a rim diameter of five and a quarter inches. If we look on the ground underside, we can clearly see exactly the same. Knowing the shapes is the way forward with your collecting, because knowing what something is enables you to, to oftentimes buy, buy it at, at, at a at a good price because the person who owns it, the dealer, doesn't really know what it is. They, they do a lot of pricing by colour, I think. Some of them are, are incredibly knowledge. I don't want to negate anybody's anything. But for the most part, knowing what others don't know is, is the way forward. 
So enough on that. Those are the two Duncan and Miller Canterbury shaped vases. Once again, shape 115. Uh, that's an extensive line too. You're not going to see a lot of this opal wear, uh, opalescent uh, 115. You're not. You're going to see a lot of clear and you will see some colors and some opalescent, but this is, you'll find 20 pieces of clear Canterbury to one piece of uh, opalescent and expect to pay. Uh, well, the cheapest I've ever seen it is $15 and that was for a vase smaller than the two that I just shared with you. But anyway, let's move on and I'm going to share with you uh, a 1920s dime store five and three quarter inch hazel atlas bouquet vase there it is vertical panels two part mold see the vertical ribs there and it's signed on the underside with a number two i don't know if this is from a decorative line a vanity line or what kind of line i just liked it and it was a great price and uh i've seen it assigned to hazel atlas by reliable sources and so uh, also the color is hazel atlas cobalt blue you know once you start to stare at these colors and spend real time you know what you're looking at you can feel the colors you uh, excuse me you can see the colors and, and the different shades and you can literally know know the uh the manufacturer by the texture of the glass so moving on our next item this new martinsville moon drops six ounce cup it's footed cup it has a terrace foot there you know little fred, fred astaire and ginger rogers dancing up and down those on there are three lozenge raised relief vertical oval shaped lozenges and on the inside there are vertical ribs also cup as i said holds six ounces it stands two and five eighths inches tall and has a rim diameter of three and five eighths and there it is new martinsville <clears throat> moon drops that is also fairly rare along with a lot of new martinsville dinnerware Unless it's just made, I don't see very much of it. Uh, and, and I like it, actually, uh, in very much, but I just don't see a lot of it. And I do pick it up, and, and I will be sharing it uh, along the way with you. So, <clears throat> the next thing that I'd like to share with you is also a vase. And it's an electric blue, double bulbous designed vase. It's a two-part mold, and it has a pebble surface design. And to be honest, I really don't know very much about this vase at the time, right now. I suspect it comes in other colors, but I don't know the manufacturer, and I don't know the pattern name. If any of you know anything about this, uh, I would be interested to know. There it is. I didn't even measure it, did I? Let's measure it. It's seven and a half inches tall. So there it is. As I said, I like it very much, but uh, I don't know very much about it. Okay. Now I'm going to share with you some shoes that Charlie and I found at the PLD auctions in Mechanic Falls where I'm going on Friday uh, 
I'm interested to see this glass there and uh, I want to see if I can obtain some to, to share with you. So this is the, the first one that I want to share with you. And this is an electric blue Victorian ladies shoe. And it's embossed with flowers and leaves. It's fairly heavy. There it is. I hope that you can see this. Collecting glass shoes is a whole line of collectibles in and of themselves. And uh, Charlie and I will be selling these glass slippers. So uh, in the future, we'll be doing uh, a video featuring uh, some sales. And all of these glass slippers will be up for sale. Uh, I only own half of them. Uh, an abstract half, that is. Uh, so I don't know what the prices of these are going to be, but they will all be for sale at some point in the near future. This comes from the Kanawa Glass Company from West Virginia. And this line was introduced in 1968. It's two inches high and the shoe is six and a half inches long. It's beautiful. I like these shoes, but you know me, I like everything. And that's that one. Next, we have a sapphire blue baby's booty <clears throat> decorated with a daisy and button pattern. There it is. There's the front. As you can see, the lace, little lace holes there. As you can see, this is very nice. Vertical on the heel there, and clearly see the wear at the wear there. This obviously isn't new. A uh, few air bubbles in there. Uh, what does it say? Um, baby's booty decorated with a daisy and button pattern. Stands two and a quarter inches high, and it's four and a quarter inches long. And at this point in time, I'm not exactly sure who ma manufactured that particular shoe. I will keep you posted. It's a daisy. Okay. This next shoe that I'd like to share with you is a cobalt blue ladies slipper. Victorian ladies slipper there. It's from Degenart Glass, apparently introduced in 1965. Uh, this little slipper stands one and seven eighths inches high and is three and five eighths inches long. And that's the cobalt blue Degen Hart glass slipper. Okay, and we come to the final two items in this video. And they're both glass shoes. Whoops, a daisy. <laughs> two almost became one then. And I'm not talking about marriage. Oh, uh, these are a sapphire blue and an electric blue colonial bow Cinderella slippers, both made from Kanawa glass, Dunbar, West Virginia. And there they are, I'll show them to you one at a time. They have a daisy and button design. There they are, very nice. That's right there, vertical or horizontal, depending on which way you hold it up. This is the sapphire blue shoe. Two and a half inches high, five and a half inches long. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the electric blue shoe. Exactly the same, very nice. There's no mark 
on them. But uh, I went through the uh, glass slipper book and uh, it was very useful in a enabling me to, to uh, identify uh, a couple of these shoes for you. So that is the end of video featuring beautiful antique and vintage collectible blue American glass. And I will be back real soon with part two of blue glass and I'll see you then. And remember, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. The channel's growing and um, I'm excited to, uh, to get out there this summer and to share with you lots of beautiful things for us to look at and share and enjoy. So until then, I'll say goodbye and you take care.